Welcome to the Geometrical Optics Lab for Queen's College Physics Department. Uh, this is just a brief lab to show you how uh, the data was collected. Uh, I have here a laser box and a piece of paper on which I've prepared a set of axes. I've also given you a 10 centimeter long object that you can use to calibrate when you do the measurements. Uh, what I've done is I've taken a series of lenses and a laser box. I carefully lined up the center line and then put the lens centered on the axes. How did I know that they're centered on the axes? Well, if this line comes through without being diffracted and continues straight down the line, then I'm pretty well aligned. The object here is to find the focus of this lens. An interesting thing is that this is kind of smooshed out. If I cut off the two outside ones, I have a focus. If I cut off the two inside ones, I have a focus, but it's not the same focus. You can see that it's different. This is because of the spherical nature of the shape of the lens. This is something you should comment on in your lab report. You can um, start by looking up what thin lens actually means. It's a definition that you should know. And it will uh, explain the differences here. Because in fact, if I take this lens away, and I put in the mirror, I will put it on my, you can see now that this is much closer to a common focus. And what's the difference between those two? And again, if you look up the definition of thin lens, you should be able to get that. Another thing you should notice here is the lines themselves. Here, these lines have thicknesses. It's the best we can do with a laser that has to be um, uh, go through a cylindrical lens in order to make lines. And they taper down to a point here. What I've done on the, the diagrams that you're going to see is I've taken out the two outside lines. So we have one that's closer to the center and the uh, spherical nature of the lens is less uh, invasive here. So they taper down and come to an extremely fine point, which I've duplicated here. Incident rays are always from the right-hand side. Here, this is the lens that I use. You just saw it. Here is the calibration object. And I've duplicated those lines by drawing them. I set a straight edge along here and drew those lines. Now, I'm pretty good at this kind of thing. I used to be a draftsman. But there are inherent errors built into any drawing. Uh, this is a terrible way to find the focus of a lens. Among them is the shallow angle this hits at. It becomes very hard to know exactly where it meets and cuts that uh, central axis the thickness of the line. The uh, variation in trying to uh, draw those lines, can I say for sure that I'm not off a half a degree? These are all things that you should mention when you're talking about the data in your lab report. The other thing to talk about is if I then put in the other lens, there's a couple things going here. So one, we have all these lines here. You should know what they are. You should know that they're not important here. I haven't drawn them in the diagram. But nor does the focus actually show up here. You're going to have to complete this drawing and find the focus that way. The other thing to notice here is that the lines don't converge to nice thin points. They do here, but they don't here. This is another problem. And again, it's 
you should be able to pick it out of the definition of the uh, of a thin lens but this is obviously dispersion this is why the lenses the lines get bigger makes it harder even to uh, make those drawings after the lenses we used mirrors interestingly here is that the outside ones don't seem to make a difference we said that a spherical lens would have different foci for different um, uh, spherosity but here it's not making a difference and you should look at what's different between those two and wonder why again it's in the definition of thin lens this drawing is also there and you can measure the focus directly and finally a round lens again thickness of lines is consistent here and they spread out here and again the focus is not on this drawing you'll have to complete the drawing to find the focus that's procedure one there's a PDF in the assignment containing those drawings you'll print it and you'll complete whatever lines you have to complete measure the focal length of each element make a table put it in your uh, lab report comment on the different uh, observations which I've just taken you through second part of the lab is more mathematical for each of these drawings you're going to go through and use the lens makers equation or the thin lens equation and calculate the uh, magnification and object uh, image length for objects that are in two or three places I've listed them I think it's half focal length uh, twice the focal length and three times the focal length uh, this will help you get familiar with using uh, the algebra of that equation it's also should be put into a table uh, so that it's clear because the important part here is what happens when the object crosses that focus and whether the uh, image is inverted or real or imaginary or upright etc etc and of course there's always magnification you're going to calculate the magnification here for each of these but we want to do something else with magnification in the third uh, procedure you're actually going to use the O physics site this one I give you the link uh, in the uh, Google document uh, when you go there you're going to go to you're going to go to this page from there you go to light scan down until you get to convex and convex lenses and you get this f is 4 I think that's what I used uh, I'm not sure what I used for h but you can change the object like this drag it down to the height drag it this way so if it's one centimeter then I have this is at 10 centimeters so the object length is 10 centimeters I've got the head set to one and that is telling me that the di is 6.67 and the magnification is minus 0.67 you need to know what all of those what all of the signs mean you're going to come in and you're going to find for a bunch of different places a series of data points that approach but do not cross the focal length then you're going to plot that in Excel and plot in the Excel you should get uh, an idea of what happens to the image at the focal length and that's it um, this is a fairly simple lab 
You should have no problems. If you do, ask your instructors for help. And thank you.